Hi there, in this video we are going to go over sections 1.1 and 1.2. I have put the notes up in the module and so hopefully you have followed the instructions and you have answered the questions in this handout before watching the video. If you haven't gone through the handout on your own before starting this video, pause, go back, go back to the module, download the handout and try to answer the questions in the handout on your own and then come back and continue watching the video. That's going to be helpful in order to know what's going on in this video since I expect that you have answered the questions on your own and then in this video we go over the answers and some of the concepts we're going to learn. So we're going to start with the example one. So do you spend too much of your time texting? And so here everybody is different, right? So everybody's going to answer differently. This is why I want you to answer the questions on your own before starting the video. So I would answer no because I find myself too busy <laughs> and I honestly just text my family and I don't spend too much time texting. How many text messages have you sent so far today? So again, this is going to depend when are you doing this video? When did you answer those questions? Is it late at night? Or is it in the morning? For me, I am recording this video somewhat early in the morning, so I'm, I will say that I have sent um, two texts. And so, but I'm going to say here, answers will vary by speed. I guess I can say the same thing over here. Do you think every student in class today has sent the same number of texts? No. Right, and what are some possible explanations for different responses? As I mentioned earlier, right, it could be um, time of day, um, texting habits, what else? So on your notes, when you submit your notes at the end of the week, I want to I wanna see what other possible explanations are there for different responses. So, and that's because in statistics, right, everybody, well, in the world, everybody's different. And so if everyone was the same, we just wouldn't need statistics because the world wouldn't be very interesting if everybody had the same opinion and the same responses. There would be nothing um, in statistics to study. So part E here, do you think the order of questions A and B matter? So let's go back and see what were A and B. So part A was, do you spend too much of your time texting? And then how many text messages have you sent so far today? So does the order of those matter? So do you think if we ask, if I had asked you the questions in different order, would you assess um, your responses differently? So if I had asked instead, right, how many texts have you sent so far today? And then asked, do you spend too much of your time texting? I personally think that that would affect people's responses, right? So for me, um, how many text messages have you sent so far today? I answered two. So when the next question is, do you spend too much of your time texting? It's like, well, no, I have a low number of text messages. But somebody else may answer, I don't know, 50 texts. And then in, if the next question is, do you spend too much of your time texting? Based on the number of texts that now they know they sent, they might answer yes. Right, so then the order of the question does affect the response sometimes. Now, if you think no, in your notes, I want you to explain why not. So why do you think the order doesn't matter? All right, so as we go through statistics, some of the things we're gonna do in this class is the six basic steps. Asking questions, collecting data to address those questions, Right? So like here, do you spend too much of your time texting? So that's a question. And then we would want to collect data to, to figure out how to answer that question. Then we analyze the data and then we draw conclusions from that data. And then we communicate the results. So if I wanted to know the population of American River College, do I think that students uh, spend too much of their time texting? I will need to get a sample of American River College students asking that question and then analyze the data, draw my conclusions, and then communicate the results. What do I think? Do they spend too much of their time texting or not? 
And then looking back and ahead, right? Sometimes answers lead to more questions. So if the answer was no, IRC students don't spend too much of their time texting, then the question will, well, what do they do? What, what are other things that are taking up the students' times? So sometimes answers lead to more questions. And then the process starts over, right? Collect data to answer those questions, analyze the data, draw conclusions, communicate the results, and then you may have even more questions and more data to collect. And so that's what makes statistics fun. So I keep saying data. So what is data? Data are the values measure or categories recorded on individual entities of interest. And those individual entities, entities of interest are what we call the observational units. And this can be people, animals, or things, right? So flipping a coin, the observational unit is the coin. That's the thing that we're flipping. Do we get heads or tails? Um, people, right? ARC students. Animals. Um, what is the population of penguins? So things like that. A variable is any characteristic of an observational unit, which can take different values. Meaning things can vary, like I mentioned flipping a coin, right? If you flip a coin, it can then heads or tails. So that will be a variable. What is it? Is it heads or tails? Um, and in our case here, um, how many text messages have you sent so far today? So the variable will be the number of text messages sent. So some variables are quantitative. So that will be like in that case, the number of text messages sent today. And other variables are categorical. So taking category des designations like the flip of a coin, right? You can get heads or tails. So those, those are categories. So a categorical variable with only two categories is called binary. As I keep going back to that example of the coin, when you flip a coin, you get heads or tails. So that will be a binary variable versus if I ask you what day of the week were you born? Now that can take multiple categories. It's still a categorical variable because you have seven options, right? Monday through Sunday, all the days of the week. So that's still a categorical variable, but now you will have seven um, categories. Whereas for the flip of a coin, you only have two categories. So when you have two categories, it's called a binary. So go back and identify the observation units and variables for questions 1a and 1b. So let's go back over here. Do you spend too much of your time texting? What is the variable here? The variable is, do you spend too much of your time texting? So what do we think? What is the variable? The variable is whether or not you spend too much of your time texting. So I'm going to say whether or not you text too much. And so what type of variable is it? Is it categorical or quantitative? And so think about the answer. So the answer will be yes or no, right? So then this is a categorical variable. And because you have yes or no, it will be binary. Now for part B, how many texts have you sent today? So what kind of variable is that, categorical or quantitative? And think about the answer. The answer will be a number. So this will be quantitative. Oh, and what is the variable? The variable will be the number of text messages sent. So what is the variable? And then identify it as quantitative or categorical. And if it's categorical, is it binary or not? And so now let's go on to this next example, example two, variables on you. And again, hopefully you have um, downloaded the handout and have answered these questions on your own. And now we're just kind of going over, making sure that we understand the concepts. Um, so consider the students in this class as the observational units. So everybody that is enrolled in our STAT 300. For each of the following variables, indicate whether it is quantitative or categorical. Now here is very important in case you answered these questions, 
as actually given an answer. That is not what I wanted you to do, right? So how many Harry Potter books have you read? I don't really know how many books you have read. I just want to know, is the variable quantitative or categorical? Uh, hopefully you've read all eight. <laughs> no, but some people I know haven't read any, and some people are Harry Potter fans, and some people are just in the middle. So um, how many Harry Potter books have you read? So I don't really want the number of books you read. I want to know. Is it a quantitative or a categorical variable? So think about what the answer would be, right? There are eight books, so it would be a number. So in this case, this would be a quantitative variable. So that's the kind of response that I'm looking for, right? Not the actual number. I don't want you to actually answer the question, just is it quantitative or categorical? With which hand do you write? So you're either left-handed or right-handed. So is that a quantitative variable or a categorical variable? So your answer will be right or left. So this will be categorical. And we can say binary. And I know some of you may be thinking, what if you are epidextrous? You write with both hands. Then we would get rid of the binary and say categorical, left, right, or both. And so in that case, it will have three categories. Um, if this was in a study, then the parameters will have to be, right, whoever is the science study will have to make that decision. Am I looking for left and right, or am I looking for the epidextrous also? So that will be the team designing the study will have to make that decision before a survey goes out. How many hours have you slept in the past 24 hours? So this will be, again, I don't want your actual response, just is it quantitative or categorical? So think about the answer. What kind of answer would you give? It would be a number, right? You've slept two hours. You've slept 14 hours. So in this case, it would be quantitative. We'll come back to this question in a minute when we talk about discrete and continuous variables. Have you slept for at least seven hours in the past 24 hours? So is this categorical or quantitative? So again, think about the response. What kind of response would you give? Have you slept for at least seven hours in the past 24 hours? Sounds like a yes or no question, right? Yes, I've slept at least seven hours or no, I have not. So this will be a categorical. And how many responses do you get? So it will be yes or no. So this will be binary. On what day of the week were you born? So I already kind of used that as an example. So we, this will be categorical. And this is non-binary. Because you have seven categories. Binary is you only have two categories. And the last two, do you have an Instagram account? What kind of response would you give? Do you have an Instagram account? Yes or no, right? So then we will say yet yeah, that this is also categorical. And because there are only two responses, we will say that is binary. And the last one, how many Instagram followers do you have? Is this categorical or quantitative? Think of the response. What kind of response would you give? How many Instagram followers? That will be a number. So this will be quantitative. Now, um, when I say it is a number, it is because it's something that you can count. Um, sometimes you may still have a categorical um, variable where the answer is a number. For example, um, the player numbers, like if you have a, a team, a football team, Right, and then you the number of the players are categories. The the number identifies a player. So it wouldn't be like an amount. So that's where even though the answer is a number, it's still a categorical variable. Now next one. Explain why the following questions are not variables. What is the average number of Harry Potter books read? By a student in this class. So why is this not a variable? 
And the reason it's not a variable is because it sounds more like an analysis of the data collected about the number of Harry Potter books read. So this is a summary of data collected. So summaries are not variables. And in fact, we can go a little further, further and say this is a statistic. Uh, what percentage of students in this class are left-handed? Same thing here, right? This is also a summary. And summaries are not variables. And same answer. I guess I could just copy the thing above. Um, this is a statistic. Explain why the following questions are not variables. Have women at AHC read more Harry Potter books on average than men? And is the proportion of AHC students with a, with a Facebook account smaller than the proportion of Sac State students with a Facebook account? I think I meant to say Instagram here. So let me change that real quick. All right, so have women at ARC read more Harry Potter books on average than men? So why is this not a variable? Well, this, as I, we talked about earlier, this looks like a follow-up question to something we had. So this is, we can call this a research question. So this is not a variable. And same thing here, this is also a research question. So not a variable. So this is, when, when I say a research question, is because it's a follow-up question to data already acquired. And so here's a little, when I put the boxes here is some definitions or some summaries are coming. So summaries are not variables, research questions are not variables. And much of statistics involves making inferences from a sample to a population. And so what is a population? Population is the entire group of observational, observational units, whereas a sample is just a small part. So for example, I could say my population of ARC students, so the entire student body of American River College will be the population. A sample of that will be this STAT 300 course. So you guys are a sample of the larger population that is American River College students. Then we could take that further and say, what about college students, all community college students in the US? Now that would be the population. Then American River College students will be a sample. All right, let me pause there. I will record a second video so that my videos are not too terribly long. And so we'll continue with the next page in the part two video.